The Average Camper's Adventures. We've been to Lake Kissimmee, oh gosh, I can't think of how many times. It's one of our favorite little hideaways. Um, it's got unique fishing for us. We're used to saltwater fishing. Obviously, this is lake fishing. And uh, the first time we were out there, Shane was, oh, six? He was small. He was tiny. Anyways, we were trying to fish the reefs. Uh, actually, lily pads out there for some panfish, crappie, and what else? Bluegill. And um, we were very, very unsuccessful. And this really nice gentleman that was out there fishing saw us not catching anything, and he was calling up stuff left and right. And he taught us how to fish at Lake Kissimmee. Well, he basically showed us how to use a cane pole and crickets. So this was the first time that we ever fished with live crickets. And Which was creepy. That was pretty interesting, especially when you drop the crickets and then you have crickets in the John boat making noise all night long. But he showed us how to use crickets and uh, on this trip, we're going to try to use uh, crickets in a can. I don't know if it's going to work, but maybe maybe the crickets in the can will will be successful uh, for this trip. And what did we do when we? How did we know when to fish? Oh, he showed us that if we just go out in the John boat and pull into a patch of lily pads and just sit still for a while, that if you watch the leaves of the lily pads they'll shake when a fish goes by. So you want to drop the cricket right down next to the leaf or the lily pad leaf that, that shook and that's how you, how you fish. And we just passed the tackle shop we went to to get the cricket. Fisherman's Candy Store. So anyways, we get, we'll give the crickets in a can a try and see what we come up with and hopefully we'll catch some stuff and you can watch us do that. Otherwise we'll just be out there hanging out in the John boat and the lily pads. And uh, something that's very interesting out here is the amount of bugs out on the lake. So we have special hats for that trip. Let's we'll see if we can find them. We packed them somewhere, but I really want to wear my special hat for this trip. If you're ever down here in this area, going to Lake Kissimmee State Park in March or September, beware the love bugs. For whatever reason, on this road, right here, honey. Um, on this road here that we're getting ready to turn down, the love bugs are just wing to wing, it seems like, and, and it feels like you're going through a time warp when you're driving because of all the love bugs flying past you and hitting your windshield. It's kind of crazy. And the Florida heat has kicked in full swing, it feels like, so there's not going to be as much hiking on these trips as we take during the winter, because it's just unbearable to be out that long with this humidity and, and the sweltering heat and the open flat plains. Uh, the heat just like builds up there and just lays there and you're, oh, yeah, it's just the, miserable. I think the... Uh feels like temperature this weekend is supposed to be between 104 and 106 degrees. A lot of fond memories here at Lake Kissimmee. I think it was one of the first parks we went to, wasn't it? I believe so. When we first started camping. With Shane, that is. You guys are seeing Shane less and less because he's got to work. Yep, got to save money for college. We're arriving a little earlier than expected, so we're hoping they're going to have our spot ready and we can just go in and start setting up and put on our relaxation. Yeah, that's one of the nice things. Every time, I don't know about you, Rob, but every time I get into Willow, all of a sudden, all the stress just starts. You can feel it just melting away as soon as you kind of get sitting in your seat, put your seatbelt on, and start moving. Yep. All, the, all the work stress, all the weight of the world just fades away. Well, 
Welcome to Lake Kissimmee. Approaching destination at 1,000 feet on the right side. Good night, Samantha. Now hopefully they don't tell us that we're too early. Look at the clouds today. I love cloud watching. We got in, even though we're a little early. Hallelujah. <laughs> and the lady was so nice. In the typical Florida State Park, we have these long, winding roads back to go to the campground. It just kind of sets the mood. At least I think so. Yeah, it gets you away from, from the main area, maybe. If it's some of them are located near town, so this gets you back away from town a bit. It's quiet. I've always liked the way they they have these roads set up, winding back to the campground. In the summer months, it's a little easier to get to the park before dark because obviously uh, in Florida it doesn't get really dark until after nine o'clock. So that makes it a lot better when you're getting out of work and you need to take about a two hour trip, you can easily get to the park and still have some daylight. It's during the winter months that we have trouble getting, getting to the park before uh, the sun goes down. And it makes it a little more challenging if you're going to some place that you're unfamiliar with. Oh, that's for sure. We hope you like our videos and we thank you for watching them. Um, we're actually up to almost 200 subscribers and Rob and I never in a million years thought we'd even have 10. So, no. <laughs> so thank you very much. We appreciate you watching and we really hope you enjoy it and you get some laughs. We always try to have a good time. That's what it's all about. Getting away from the normal life stresses and just get to be yourself and have fun. And these last few camping trips that we've taken, uh, obviously Shane has not been with us because he's been working. Uh, we think it's a good thing because we're trying to get used to the idea of him not being here all the time. I mean, we've been the Three Musketeers for 18 years, and that's about to change soon. And so I think these weekend camping trips, just Rob and I, have been really good for us. It, it, uh, for adjusting. And, yeah. and good for Shane because he's having to be on his own and make his own food and <laughs> take care of himself. Yeah, he needs the adjustment, we need the adjustment. Um, even though we'd love for him to be here, but he does have a greater responsibility, which is, you know, preparing himself for college, but then I think also him being able to be at home by himself a little bit for from time to time is, uh, is going to help him to transition better. And it'll help us to transition not having him around quite as much, even though we love having him around. I, I think but it's, it's we necessary. need the bigger of the transition uh, time than yeah. we will. He's going to such an exciting time in his life. I mean... Oh yeah, he's going to leave the house and be like, woohoo! Yeah. But, you know, we'll have probably more difficulties with him leaving. Yeah, we'll be boohoo! Yeah, we'll be more like boohoo. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, that time in your life is a very exciting time and he's going to grow a lot in the first year. Oh yeah, wait till, wait till we see him at Christmas, because that's the first time we're going to get to see him once we drop him off. It'll be Christmas. So, we'll make sure that he does a check-in video. Yeah, we've been very blessed to have him, him in our lives. Oh, there's a ranger. And that's exactly what our son is hoping to do, to become a park ranger. Yep, parks and recreation management. How fitting is that? He's grown up in this. Yep, he's life. grown up with this, spent most of his life in and out of parks and camping and so forth, so it was very fitting when he decided that he wanted to become a park ranger. How's this for a long winding way back? <laughs> Yeah, I think goes, said it was three miles, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it goes a long way. Alright, there's camps sites 1 through 60. 
Yeah, and we're at 36. That's us, right? Yeah. It's so pretty. I love Florida State Parks. They do such an amazing job with their, with their parks. At least the ones we've been to. We haven't been to them all, but we sure would like to. We sure tried. We sure <laughs> been to many. Many of the parks we went to were we went to before we started the YouTube channel, and so mostly um, we just have a lot of pictures instead of video. So well, that's because they didn't have video. We had these big old cameras back well, then. Well, yeah, you know, you're using cameras that are the size of suitcases. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> we didn't have a lot of video back then, um, just pictures, and so we would love to have been able to share with you those other trips that we have taken. But nobody really wants to, I don't think anybody really wants to sit there and watch just a bunch of scrolling pictures. No. Um, Although we are going to do one uh, for the pictures that I've taken, the photos that I've taken that didn't get into a video, uh, maybe because of time or... Yeah, length of the video or whatever, then we're going to definitely get those in so that you can see some of these amazing pictures because uh, many of them are really nice. 36. 36. 36. As you can see on the pavement, if you can see the pavement, they have the site numbers actually on the pavement, so they're easy to see and find. Yeah, which we could have used at the last trip. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> because that was crazy. Oh, you should have seen us finding the dump station at that last park. That was entertaining. That was entertaining. It's right over here, honey. This is 36. All right, here we are at 36. We really enjoy taking walks through the uh, campground loops. A lot of times we can see things that you know you wouldn't normally see as far as the campground setups. People have great ideas and it's fun to take a look. Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. A hard-sided pop-up camper. Never seen one of those before. Pretty interesting. I don't know if you can see this or not, but this is a, a hammock that fits on the back of the truck. How cool is that? Love it. Look at all the paths we get to choose from. Hello, honey, I see sand. There's our lily pad patch.
All right, so the idea is we sit here nice and calm and just wait for the water to settle and see if we can't see one of these lily pad leaves shake, which means a fish just went by. And then we dip our cane pole right into the water with our cricket and success. But we're not sure if these crickets are going to work. We've never tried crickets in a can before, so we'll see how it goes. The last time we were here, I don't know what kind of bugs, like noceums or what they were, but they all were sitting on top of the lily pads, and as soon as we pulled in, the uh, the bugs went crazy. So we ended up getting these hats. Well, a friend got it for us. Well, actually, yeah, a friend got it for us, and uh, hoping that we could protect ourselves from all these little bugs that sit on these lily pads, but today it doesn't seem too bad. Um, definitely a lot less bugs this time, but here's the hat. Check this out. Net. And it works perfectly. It's awesome. Okay, we're not exactly having a lot of success, but I think most of it is because we need live crickets. I think that's the way to catch these fish because the canned crickets, although they have a scent, they're not wiggling around or making noise, so I'm sure that's a part of why we can't catch anything today. We're getting ready to go to the observation tower to see if we can see some fireworks around the lake. So, so far in the park we've come across a deer and an armadillo, but unfortunately we didn't, I didn't have a camera ready to, to get the shot. No, it was my bad idea. I said, no, we're just going to take the garbage out. What can we see? <laughs> deer. It's a beautiful night tonight. The temperature's not too hot. We had some rain last night which helped cool things off just a little bit. So this is really pleasant. Okay, we're looking around for the deer. Usually in the evening like this, the deer tend to hang out right next to the side of the roads or trails. I'm not seeing anything yet, but maybe we'll come across one soon. Catch the small bats flying around. Here he goes. There he goes. Oh yeah. There he goes. Oh. Well, they're hard. They're so hard to catch on video. Here he goes. Oh. Oh. <laughs> He's very difficult to catch. They're very three of them. fast. They turn There's quick. Three. Oh, no, I totally missed him. Look at another one. I just saw him turn back there by the start. Okay, oh, there he goes. We're just starting to hear a little booming and banging in the background. Some fireworks going off. This cow camp is a really cool place. It's where you like go back in time type of a, a situation. So you can go there. They're open, I think, every day except for holidays and Sundays from like 8 to 4.30. And it's like stepping back in time, back to the original Florida cracker time. I think they finally spotted a deer. No, I see a tail. Sorry about the light, it's not a very good picture, I'm sure, but I just barely saw it moving in the distance there. And she's hanging out 
where we need to grazing go. Grazing the grass. Okay, we're at the tower. I'm going to go up and see if anybody started to shoot some fireworks off. We're getting close. enough we should be able to see anybody shooting something off hopefully at least of significant size look at those clouds looks like we could get some more rain tonight not sure nice sunset in the back there Happy, Happy Independence, Independence Day. Day. Join us next time on the Average Camper's Adventures.